Right, hello there, and welcome to today's video, ladies and gentlemen. And today, we are going to take a look at this PS4. Now, I appear to have lost the attachment for my phone camera off my tripod, which is annoying, so if this is jerking about a little bit, I apologise, because I am holding it in my hands. Uh, anyway, I'm currently in the middle of converting my capture setup to the new sort of fandangled version to get some live streaming done, so... It's kind of in the middle of that, so that's probably I've taken it off the tripod the other day, so I can put my new 4K camera on there, and I don't know where I've put it. So anyway, back to today's topic. We have our PlayStation here. This is booted to a white light, and if we go up here, oh dear. So we have a red display, completely garbled, and everything else. <laughs> you can actually kind of see the uh, some of the new kit. <laughs> um, for the new setup on the top there, the box there with the blue lights on it is actually from the old setup that's what we're still using for today but anyway I digress so as you can see this thing is flickering to a red screen and it's not happy uh, this particular machine has had a new encoder I see a new port I believe and it's also been reballed I'm pretty sure uh, the guy said so um, the owner of this machine has actually asked if I could put this on YouTube so you know he says any chance of getting this on YouTube so why not? So as you can see we have a snowy red display with some flickering black bars on there. Not good. So he actually says he's checked all the work again before sending it up. He found a couple of loose pins on the HDMI encoder I see. He resoldered those. Uh, apparently before he was getting absolutely no output and now we're just getting this red screen of horrible. So we'll get this apart, we'll get it under the microscope and uh, we'll go over it see if we can find anything else. So uh, join me in a sec boys and girls. We'll see what we can do. Right, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the board from said machine, all back on our desk. And hopefully we'll be able to find what's wrong. So, as we said before, it has indeed had a replacement port. And in fact, the PS4 itself had a note attached to the top. I'll read you that. It uh, just says, hi Andy, this PS4 has had a new HDMI IC chip, replacement HDMI port, and small component nearest the port. Uh, I rechecked the HDMI IC chip connections and found two loose pins which I resoldered so the PS4 does now have some output but obviously not how it should display. It displays a scrambled screen after about two minutes uh, while showing the white light. Many thanks from Terry. Hopefully Terry doesn't mind me popping his name on the bottom there. Um, but yes, so we will take a quick look at this machine. So, I mean in general from um, from just having a quick look over the machine, it actually seems to be fairly tidy work. I'm quite impressed. Um, but as always, it would be silly not to just check the basics, so that is what we're going to do. So if you find yourself in a similar position, whereby you've attempted to replace things yourself, and you've got an issue whereby you've either got no picture, or you're not getting the output or results you would have expected, then, you know, we're going to go over some basic troubleshooting that you should all follow before throwing in the towel. Which might just save you a few quid by sending it to... Uh, you know, for, for a second opinion. So, best thing to do is if you do find this and you do have a bit of a problem, just to even go away just for 10 minutes. I'll put it down, come back to it the day after. You'll be amazed what a bit of a rest uh, will actually do for you as far as, you know, a second pair of eyeballs go. It's like it gives you a completely fresh look at it. And sometimes you spot stuff and it wouldn't have mattered how long you just sat there before, stuff that you would have spotted before that you just can't see the wood for the trees. So, as always, if you're really stuck, just go away, come back in a couple of hours in the next day, whatever, have another look, then if you can't work it out. Then as always, you know, people like myself are always here to help you out. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're looking at the back of the new HDMI port. I figured this is always the best place to start. So we've had a quick look at the front of the port, just to check it's in physically good condition. Uh, I have actually got the lights off in this office for now, so I'm just going to give that another quick eyeball underneath the desk lamp and indeed yeah the port does look okay so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give each of these pins a nudge test and essentially all you need for that is I wouldn't recommend the M probe of a, a multimeter to be honest because if you've got fine probes they're fairly easily bent and damaged but anything like the end of a pair of tweezers you know something fairly cheap uh, you know a fine jewel screwdriver blade something like that always pretty good for doing this sort of thing. So we're going to give them a nudge test first of all and what this does is it just checks for any loose pins so we're just going to give each pin, we don't want to be too hard because we don't want to break the solder joints, we don't want to break the pins uh, but you know a little bit of firm fairly gentle pressure just to make sure 
but these things don't move at all. All looking fairly good for now. As I say, you know, it sounds like Terry's done the right thing and checked this himself. But as always, you know, I just like to uh, to make certain of things because at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> we're all capable of missing some fairly straightforward things in my time. I've done it. Everybody's done it. Everybody in this, in, you know, who does this for a living has done it. I've chased many a problem, especially when I first started out when it turned out to be something really simple and straightforward. So now we're checking for continuity between the pins. So the multimeter is in continuity mode. That means it beeps whenever we touch the two probes together. But for now... So we shouldn't get any beeps at all here. Up to now. All was good. I have to say under the microscope it doesn't look like there's anything there. Uh, as always though, you do never know. That's me touching ground. That's me touching ground again. Yep, yeah, okay, lovely. So those seem to be properly soldered in place. And, uh, you know, we don't have anything there. What I am going to do is I'm just going to touch up those joints a little bit just to uh, try and get them a little bit more uniformly coated in solder. There's nothing particularly wrong with the way that they are. Um, but you'd be amazed what... You know, they don't seem to be moving. They seem to be well adhered underneath the pad, you know, underneath the actual leg of the chip to the pad. So I'm sure the problem isn't actually on the port. But, uh, you know, just to make sure that these are all uniformly soldered, as they should be, I am going to put some fume extraction on. Okay. Silly me nearly forgot then. So we're just going to go over these joints, just touch them up slightly. So all I've done is added a little bit of flux and the heat from the iron and the solder will basically follow the, the source of the heat so when I actually go above the leg of the chip the solder will actually follow me up there and then all I do is touch the spot between the base of the pin and the actual pad that the leg is soldered to and that just reflows both surfaces together it gives us a nice shiny port leg and gives us a nice uniform coating of solder. So, oops. Just pull that towards me just so I can clean it a little bit easier. Sorry if I took it out of view there for a sec. Okay. So the next job is to check the alignment and the pins on the HDMI encoder IC. Again, Terry says he's done that, and I don't doubt him for a minute. But, like I say, you know, I'm here to give it a second pair of eyeballs, and you know, just to check the basics before we start thinking what else might be causing this particular problem. So, at the end of the day, that's where I earn my money, so that's what I'm going to do. So, we are going to get this in focus for you. We're going to get nice up and close to the legs. Okay. I'm just going to knock the old fume extraction off for a second. So, this is the HDMI encoder I see and the feet. So, we're just going to have a really quick once over around here just to make sure we have no bridging. As I say, by eye, it all looked to be really quite nice and neat. Now, then, that end foot there. See it? Just make sure that's soldered. Looks to be, to be fair. Oh. 
Yeah, it seems to be solid enough. So going along here again doesn't look to be out of alignment at all. All looks okay. Looks all right. So visually, yeah, all looks fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give each of these the nudge test. So the nudge test is essentially. Just getting the same as we did with the HDMI port, tweezer blade, and we're just going to push each and every pin in turn. Now then, the, and we'll just zoom this out a little bit, because of the amount of zoom we've actually got here. When I push these pins, it's going to take it slightly out of focus. So, you'll have to bear with me for a second. Okay. So, we're just looking for... Oh, on, that one's moved. That one's moved, and that is directly onto the output of one of the HDMI encoder uh, IC EMI filters. So that's definitely going to want a little bit of uh, a little bit of loving with the soldering iron. And this is the thing, you see, when when you're doing this by eye, or you're doing it with, you know certain magnification it, you know you can still miss things when you've got something like this thing that can get so close up to the leg it really does make this job a whole boatload easier and that's not moving now so that's all good we've got this one here this one seems to be moving yeah that's moving as well I'll tell you what we're gonna do because this is all seems to be moving so, bear with me while I get this back in focus for you. Shouldn't take me too long. There we go. So, what we're going to do is we are going to reflow this IC back into position. So, all we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of flux to the outside edge. So, we know that it's had a new port. We've checked the port. The port is good. We've checked the encoder IC, which we're told has been changed. And we've found a couple more bits of loose, you know, solder, a little bit of uh, looseness on a couple of the pins there, particularly on the output to the encoder EMI filters, which could very well be causing our problem. We also know it's had a component closest to port, which is one that's fairly commonly knocked off. So again, we'll check that. I'm just going to put my fume extraction back on. Okie doke. So... Here we go. So you'll notice as well, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, we have a kink tip on the quick station. <laughs> it's only taken me the best part of 12 months to order it. So all we're going to do is we're just going to go around the IC. And we're just going to reflow all these connections. So we're going to get the uh, pins nice and warm. Plenty of flux on there. So I apologise if the wand is going to block your view slightly there for a sec. Obviously, we do need to get to the pins. So yeah, we're just going to go around every pin, each side of the, uh, of the chip. We're going to get everything nice and liquidous as far as the solder goes. Get the flux activated on there and then we're just going to get these tweezer blades and we're going to put a little bit of gentle downwards pressure towards the board across the centre Of the IC. Gonna hold it there for a few seconds while everything just solids back up. You'll see there that the solder kind of turns from its liquidous, really shiny state. You'll see it going a little bit duller once it starts to cool. We've hit that point now, so all we need to do is get a little bit of IPA on that. I'm gonna let the board cool down for a second now before we go and attack that. Otherwise, you can just end up making more mess than it tends to do is crystallise the, the IPA. Now, 
once over, I did actually wonder what the hell it was. It like it leaves like a white mark on there. Apparently, that's actually something in the flux, um, which reacts with the alcohol when it's really warm. So I actually thought it was the IPA itself, but it's not. So anyway, for that useless fact of the day, so you can see across there where we actually put pressure down with the uh, with the tweezer blade. So we just went smack across diagonally. Holds a nice bit of even pressure across the IC when we do that. And uh, we're just going to put a few drops of IPA around this IC now. I will also align that back leg again as well. Not because it's a problem and it did seem to be on okay, but just so it's a little bit better sighted. You know, everything else looks alright. It just looks like that one pin's got a little bit knocked, maybe, when it was removed from its donor. So, I'm going to zoom back in on that leg. Nice and close. There we go. Time for your close up, Mr. HDMI filter. So, HDMI filter? HDMI encoder. Filter's on the brain today, so. see it doesn't take a lot and well, that leg feels a little bit loose a little bit loose so you do have to be gentle and to be fair I did just go at it like it's touch like Ted Bundy so we just want it definitely so it's lined upon the pad there we go Very, very awkward, this. Gonna need a tweezer blade, I think. Seems to be a little bit twisted. There we go. Lovely. That'll do it. So, just going to give this another nudge, make sure that that's nice and solid on there. Should be. It is indeed. It's not going anywhere. Lovely. Okay. That can be a little bit troublesome, so just as a, a quick aside for you there, if you do end up replacing a HDMI encoder IC yourself, if you bend one of the legs out of shape, whether it be when it's been removed or whatever else, if it does get slightly caught, uh, it does weaken the leg quite a little, you know, quite a bit. You saw there, uh, with a little bit of pressure on the iron, it actually folded back under itself, so chances are at some point the IC has had that back leg bent a little bit. And you do tend to find that it doesn't take much for it just to bend back to its horrible state. And as you can see there, we had a bit of fun just to straighten it up. But we have straightened it up. And we should be able to see now in that top left corner. It's now comfortably on its pad. Back over there. So that's all good. It's mainly just... I mean, it would have been fine before. It's mainly, mainly just my housekeeping there, really. But we should be, we should be good now. So we're just going to check the... Uh, the legs back down on the front of this IC just to make sure that we are all soldered and singing from the same hymn sheet we should be now yeah. can see now that these aren't moving anywhere, which is fantastic. All good. So, we're happy with those. So, next up, these EMI and encoder IC filters. So, basically, what these little things do is they prevent any electrical interference 
from disturbing the output from the IC. Now the thing is, is that the signals coming out of here are digital of course, they're HDMI and they are very very high speed signals. Now rather like USB because USBs also have similar filters on the front of them if these filters are slightly out of spec uh, it can cause havoc with the data throughput and it can corrupt the signal. So these things are actually fairly important. Now you can at a push bridge them uh, to actually sort of get them working again so if you find one that's actually knackered you can bridge them with a bit of wire but I would always recommend for a long term thing certainly if you're going to be doing this for a customer that those filters are replaced. If you do need some filters have a look in the description of this video uh, you will find my email address uh, drop me an email on there now and I should be able to hook you up with some uh, I'm prepared to ship them worldwide obviously I will give you a postage cost and you know cost for the filters if you want to go ahead great if you don't obviously that's your prerogative I do have a web shop which will be opening shortly when I actually get around to actually finishing it off uh, but just been really busy recently so not had the time so anyway as far as checking these filters go now just could tear that extraction off it does my bloody head in so we've got these four HDMI encoder IC EMI filters here basically each one of these has four contacts it has one contact top left top right bottom left and bottom right and essentially when they're good they should read continuity from top left to bottom left and top right to bottom right if either side doesn't display continuity or it displays continuity across then the filter is defective and should be replaced so we are going to test this one now so bottom left top left going across nothing okay that one's good so top left bottom left is good we're going top right bottom left nothing which is cool top right bottom right if it's continuity we can hear the beep that's good Okay, top left, bottom left is good. Top right, bottom left is nothing, so that's cool. Top right, bottom right is good. And then finally, top left, bottom left. Top right, bottom left. Nothing. Uh, bottom right, top right. Continuity, excellent. So there we go. So they, we know the filters are in good shape. We'll give everything a good final clean off, obviously, when we've actually finished. But for now, that looks good. So, you know, we're going to trust the rest of these legs for now Get these slightly in focus again it's the harshness of the light which makes the focus slightly temperamental but okay that's cool so we've checked our HDMI oops we've checked our HDMI port as we can see there now our legs are looking really nice and shiny we gave them a bunch of test we know they're good and so we also had a thing on that a note on the machine here which says that the I'll just straighten the camera back out for you. It says the component nearest the port at the front was knocked off and replaced. So that is this little diode right here. Now that diode there I believe is pin fifteen if I remember correctly. So we'll just check that with a multimeter just to make sure we do have continuity between there and there. And my multimeter is going to throw a fit in a minute. There we go. So, pins 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. Right there. To here. As we're looking at it, the right side of that diode should indeed read continuity, and it does. Now, it is in directly behind this first resistor we have continuity there now then I can see a problem with this and I wonder if any of you seasoned PS4 veterans can spot what that problem might be I'm just gonna leave it there for a second just gonna leave it there for a second I just need to wander over here for a moment and I just wonder if uh, some of you boys and girls can spot what that uh, what the problem might be. You're probably screaming it right now. <laughs> but I'm just going to leave you to it for another moment longer. 
Okay, for those of you who have given up, or long since given up caring, put you out of your misery right now. So, this diode here, pin 15, is actually a protection diode. And essentially what that does is it limits current going uh, one way through the port. So, essentially, it actually stops anything coming this way actually back out through the port. Uh, so it only allows input. Now, what you can do is a push. Again, you can bridge that. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Uh, but you will notice that these things have a line on them, and the line denotes which side actually prevents current flow. So this side here, you'll notice there is a line on this little uh, diode here, and I wonder if we can get any closer to it than that. You probably can actually, but my microscope setup is right at the very top of the stand. So, but you can see there, there is so like this diode here. This pin 13 diode has a line here, so that allows current flow that way, but prevents anything coming back this way. So this is effectively where the stop is. And this one allows stuff this way, but it stops it here, coming this way. Now then, the problem we have here is you will notice there is a slight... You can see the white of the, the line there, the edge, just in the microscope light. So the line is here. That line needs to be here. This diode is actually reversed. The direction of the diode is actually inverted. So we do need to turn that around. So in order to do that, I'm going to put a little bit of flux on here. Now and again, if this is the wrong way, or it isn't actually in place at all and is missing then you will have problems and you probably will find you have no picture or destructive picture okay now then I've actually not been very clever here and I haven't put my fume extraction back on Silly boy that I am. So I'm going to have to do this without the fume extraction. I'm trying to do this backwards, which is fun because I can already feel a bloody thing burning my hand. <laughs> All right, now I should get it off the tweezer. So. Oh, do you know? <laughs> I hate these tweezers. These tweezers are a pain in the arse. The number of times I lose things across this desk because these tweezers ping on. Oh, God, I know. Can I find it? Nope. I can't. Nope, it's gone. Fantastic. Okay. Right. Well, it looks like we're getting a replacement diode for that one then, doesn't it? Now then. For those of you who know, remember, or care, you will of course remember that I said ages ago, actually about the time when I said I was going to order the nozzles for the quick on one of several thousand occasions, which is, oh, I'm going to get some new tweezers as well. Yeah. Yeah, I well, guess who never got any tweezers. So, just bear with me a second, boys and girls, while I get the diode off this board. Right. Get our board back in shot. This is a lot easier when you don't have to do anything under the camera. <laughs> right. Try again, eh? Okay. Lovely. So I'm just going to nudge that back into position. I 
Okay, lovely stuff. I'll pop that back over there. Where the chuffing hell I've put my IPA, cotton swab, thank you. So, hopefully, now you can just about see the line is on the right hand side as we're looking at it now. So you can see just about the line there. Okay. That's lovely. So that's that. And everything else while we're here, we'll just have a quick visual. Can't see anything else that's missing. Anything else that looks like it's not happy. Not immediately happy. So you can see all these diodes actually face the same way. So this top one, the line is to the right. Second one up, the line to the right. This one, also line to the right. So that should be good. So what we're going to do now. We've got to put this board back in the chassis, cross our fingers, hope everything works, and uh, hopefully by the time we're done, we're going to have a working PlayStation. Alright, okay, so we have partial reassembly, got a white light, but I uh, have no cigar up there on the display. You can just about see the red light in the bottom corner there, it's flashing away. Basically means there is no signal, so there's no sync of anything, so not good. So we will dismantle this and we'll take another look. Right, okay then ladies and gentlemen, so we're back on the desk again. So, after checking the port, the port being good, uh, ch uh, checking the soldering of the encoder IC, and redoing that, and that checking out okay, EMI filters checking out okay, and uh, rewriting the position of that diode, we still have no output to our display which is a little bit annoying. So actually the machine didn't ship with a hard disk and the first screen we saw there with the red um, corruption was actually at 480p. It was actually in safe mode. It was actually the message there telling us that the machine uh, couldn't actually, dis you know, it couldn't ha access storage. So that's uh, not generally indicative of a very healthy encoder I see. If it won't even output 480 then it's usually a good sign you've got a bit of a problem there. So what we're going to do, because we don't know about this encoder IC, we've no idea where it came from, we've no idea you know, how it was installed, we've no idea whether it was even working in the first place, whether it's been grabbed off a donor, whether it's supposedly a new one, whatever else, um, then because we don't know the existence of it and we don't know the history, we don't know if it works, we are going to change it. So we are going to apply some more flux. And I'm just going to have get the fume extraction running and the air wand so we're going to replace this encoder IC now then I actually haven't got one thinking about it now uh, when I've actually sat down I don't actually have any of these things to hand so I'm going to have to wander off and go get one in a minute which was a little bit silly because you would have thought I'd have made sure I actually had everything I needed before I sat down to record this section Oh no, we don't do that. That involved being organised and that's just not me, ladies and gentlemen. As you've probably worked out now by now, <laughs> if you've watched most of my videos. Organisation and Andy Paul? What? Oops. Trying to make a break for freedom there, little bugger. Right, anyway. So we've got that off. We'll pop that to one side for now. And uh, we'll clean this site up, so. And then we'll go and get a new IC out of my stock. So, what we'll do is we're just going to clean this uh, site up. So the way we do that, a little bit of flux on there. I'm going to need my new reel of solder out before the end of this video I'm sure because I've only got like this tiny little bit left in my hand good job we bought some more otherwise we'd be in trouble and so we basically just get a ball of it on the end of the iron and just work it 
into the pads. And what that does, it just tins everything up with some nice clean fresh leaded solder. Retins all the pads. Make sure there's a perfect amount of solder on there. We're going to leave the uh, sticky tacky horrible flux from that. That's going to help us adhere the new port, the new port, the new encoder of IC a little bit easier. So I'm now going to wander off and go get a replacement. Uh, so I'm probably going to stop this because they're right over the far end of the office. No, my look, I won't be able to bloody find them because of internet uh, padded envelope. They've only just come in. So, <laughs> so I've got quite a pile of padded envelopes over there for the moment. So I will join you, boys and girls, shortly. Right, Ken, ladies and gentlemen. So we have an encoder IC just here so I'm going to go and put this on so in order to do that we're going to put a little bit of flux over our nicely tinned up area now then this could be fun with these tweezers because as we were saying earlier they don't grip bugger all these days so this could be amusing Just watch me trying to put this back in place well, it's going to be amusing for you, it's not going to be amusing for me. Frankly, with these tweezers, this job is a bit of a nightmare. So I'm just going to have to try and get hold of it as best I can. There we go. Okay, so, now we're going to get our hot air. Oh, bloody hell. Right. There's just a massive wires on this desk these days, which is, you know, I suppose it's a necessary evil. I'm just going to flow the flux. Okay, so we're going to offer our encoder IC roughly into position. And you see, it already wants to make a, a run for it. Oh, my tweezer blades. A bloody thing. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to get this thing up to temperature. We're going to make sure we're aligned everywhere. Just going to push it down to the board. In each direction. Okay. So we're roughly in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some more flux now to the actual legs of the IC. Okay. Right. So we're just going to check alignment on the top. So it probably just wants nudging in slightly to the top, to the towards the right. And the whole thing probably wants nudging over to the right slightly by the looks of things. So that's okay. So we're just going to get this back up to temperature now. The flux will help us here. So we're just going to try and nudge this in a sec. Surface tension might do the work for us here, but you never know. Okay, so we nudged in there towards the top. Okay. Right. Fairly nicely in position now, so we're just going to go around and just flow all these joints. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of downwards pressure as before across. Diagonally. Gonna wait for everything just to solid up. You can see it go there. Lovely. Again, you can sort of see there from the uh, flux trail where our tweezers were sitting across the IC. 
And we look to be nicely soldered and in position there. Excellent. So again, we're going to leave this a minute or so just to cool. Before we go and apply the IPA, we don't want to... The thing with IPA is it will cool the component very quickly, but the trouble is it's very hot at the moment. So we want to be kind to the IC, we don't want to give it any thermal shock. Because the thing with IPA is it evaporates incredibly quickly, so it draws heat out. So of course as soon as you put the IPA on, it evaporates into the atmosphere and draws heat away very quickly. So by doing that, you know, we're not being very kind to the IC or the board, so... Apply a couple of small drops to it now. Just going to clean it up. Clean the area around. It's always easier to do this when the board is slightly warm. It's always easier to get the uh, the old flux residue off it when it's warm. And cotton bud. Just to finish it off. Okay, so that's our new encoder IC in place now. You can see the alignment on the legs is really rather nice. We're in position. So we're going to put this back into the machine, fire it back up, retest it, and hopefully this time we'll have some joy. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen. So after a little bit of faffing around, uh, we didn't actually uh, record the full-on swapping of components we did after the. Uh, Encoder I assume came back to this. I had a, a good number of machines to get through afterwards. So I packed this to one side while I did those. Um, but what I will do is I will go over what we did, what we measured, how we came to the conclusion we did, and how we fixed it. Um, what I will show you now is the testing, and then we'll go and do the recap. So as you can see, this is the PlayStation in question. The monitor is switched over to the HDMI input that this monitor is on. So it had no hard drive in here by default, so it's a hard drive I've had to put in. So chances are this is going to boot to safe mode, but there we go. As you can see, it cannot start the PS4, and that's because it's got a hard drive in there that doesn't belong to it, but that's not really uh, a concern to me at all. The concern is that we have output to display, and as you can see there, it's all working and working excellently. So what we'll go do now is we will go back to the bench and we'll recap a little bit I've uh, I've t videoed for you to show what we measured what components we went through uh, to actually deduce the uh, the issue at the end of the repair so we'll go do that now All right, okay ladies and gentlemen so as you can see there on the testing we had a little bit of trouble getting this thing back working again uh, we actually got no signal at all through the TV uh, we came back we checked everything like the um, legs on the replacement encoder IC didn't get any joy there unfortunately so what we did was uh, we had a look around the board now we didn't film this at the time because it was kind of pushed for time and I had another four or five machines to do uh, but we'll go over what I did so come over down here and essentially what happened was is we measured these diodes here so forwards I think they were about 0.5 volts which is right and in reverse about 1.7 uh, that's okay uh, that's all good uh, this one here doesn't really read anything in reverse if I remember rightly but it is 0.5 volts forward again all checked out okay that's fine so we have both these two uh, resistors here on the right hand side those both read 2k piece so that's all good uh, this diode here uh, absolutely no problem there at all uh, not short of the ground or anything like that which is sometimes indicative of a faulty encoder I see God knows what this monkey horrible stuff is that was there before we started um, but anyway you know so all looking yeah a little bit wrong but uh, all reading exactly what it should do uh, we have these rather large capacitors here uh, these supply power to the IC 
those weren't reading a short or anything like that so uh, and you know general readings with a multimeter compared to a donor board seemed absolutely fine this uh, thermistor here she's used like a resettable fuse that was reading uh, continuity across so that one's absolutely fine so what we actually ended up doing was there are some small packages here I'm unsure whether these are dual transistors or whether these are MOSFETs but either way there's one here uh, one here, one here and one here and essentially what we did we replaced those uh, four little uh, ICs there we replaced those with ones from a donor board and as you can see on the testing when we tested it it turned out to be absolutely fine and all working very very nicely so sometimes usually what you'll find is is if these go bad and I don't know which one it was because at the end of the day you'd have to change each one test it change each one test it change each one test it and it's just a pain so for what it's worth you might as well just change all four but usually what you tend to find is <coughs> excuse me is that one of these caps will usually short with them and one day short usually takes out these little things so in our case that wasn't that wasn't what was happening but everything else seemingly was reading absolutely fine and without issue which kinda left only the one possibility for it and that was that the issue was down to those little ICs there so I'm just gonna clean this bit of the board off because it's rather horrible uh, but anyway we can do that um, a future time anyway I will actually do that off camera to be honest because oh, you want to watch that is it <laughs> repairs done and everything's working as you can see we've gone over with recap Y uh, so I'll go ahead and I will go clean this uh, but as you've seen there ladies and gentlemen just goes to show that with a bit of persistence and uh, you know with a second pair of eyeballs sometimes it does help to actually uh, find and alleviate some really sort of stubborn problems that you may have with your PS4 HDMI circuit. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, I am available on here. I have my uh, business email address in the description. If you'd like to contact me regarding any repairs, anything like that, then feel free to do so. As I say, my email address is down there. My website is coming soon when I can uh, sort of get around to finishing it. Uh, really busy at the moment with repairs which is kind of affecting the, the speed of that but if there is anything you need any sort of you know if you want to get in touch and book a repair with me absolutely you know go ahead and contact me on there for now I'm on there uh, if you need any parts anything like that that I may be able to assist you with as I said you know EMI filters things like that for HDMI circuit I do have them in stock I do have them ready to go if you do need them just hit me up give me a shout and I'll see what I can do for you uh, failing that if it's just a question then I do prefer them to be put below simply because uh, one it frees my business email up for actual business related purposes uh, and number two really you know it's beneficial to all if everybody can see your comment and my answer somebody else with the same problem will get the benefit of my answer you know and, and learning from the the problem that you posted there as opposed to having 10 people email me about the same thing uh, failing that I am on Twitter as a DM you know if you've something there that you'd rather not air to the public you know but you want to get across to me then uh, my Twitter inbox at YT Andrew Paul is always open uh, again link to that will be in the description of the video uh, and you know just hit me up if you need I'm always here so uh, thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen it's been a pleasure uh, thankfully we've got to the bottom of this because uh, you know it can be a bit of a slog sometimes when you get an awkward one but thankfully this one decided to play nice in the end so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it as always for the previous little bit there we've gone through all the methods you can get me by if you need to feel free to hook me up and uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys and girls on the next video. Thanks for watching. I've been Andy Paul, you've been fantastic, and I'll see you guys and girls on the next video. Many thanks for watching then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.